I'm Thomas O'Brien and I'm an interior designer in New York City. We're going to take a look at my garden in Bellport, Long Island. So this is my garden in Bellport, New York, and it started with the Academy House, which I bought about 20 years ago. And over time, what's happened is the library house has been added, and in the end, I think I really wanted more garden. I designed the library house to be, there's, there's a side door, this is the door to the kitchen for the Academy House, and there's a side door to the library. And you can see from one kitchen into the other, there's this absolute connection between the two spaces. The Copper Beach is in the center of everything and aligns with the brick ground and aligns with the sunken garden and it's this 300 year old tree. I mean, it pre kind of predates so much around. It's this massive, wonderful, beautiful tree. It's like a lantern at different times of the day, both at dawn and later when the sun's setting. All of the light is all filled up inside of it and, um, and um, it's kind of this beautiful center to everything. The first image is in the walled garden, which is the last place we come to in the garden, and kind of magic in that um, it's this very isolated kind of woodland space with this beautiful oval walk in it. But I'd always wanted a walled garden, like an English walled garden. I had this little tear sheet of a 1930s kind of bungalow with these this sort of arched porch that I had over my desk when I was a kid in the business working at Ralph Lauren for years and years. And it was the inspiration for the sort of arches and even the pedestals that are part of the facade at the front that have those two pots. And it's this wonderful outdoor room with an outdoor wood-fired oven that is we use all the time with entertaining here. And the, the garden house is kind of really this heart of the outdoor space. So the pale blue and porches, which I have on all the porches at the, the academy and the library, the pale blue is this old kind of tradition of um, painting them like sky so that ghosts and witches won't like linger there. I mean, I love the pale blue ceiling. Just, I, I love the combination with the pale yellow here, this yellow color I just adore and um, um, it's just such a warm and lovely space in the middle of everything. This image with this beautiful, wonderful uh, column in the middle of it. There are, the, there are these different beds, and this is kind of the column bed in the, in the sunken garden. Actually, in, we live right in the middle of Belport Village, and it's very flat. And um, so I've always wanted to create a little bit of um, level change in the garden. and so. One of the other elements as an idea that was part of the dream of creating this garden was to do this sunken garden. There are these wonderful benches that I love from the south of France that are a pair of that have always been together, these white painted benches. Um, it's a mixture of vintage furniture. Um, I love outdoor furniture being kind of a mix, even in my own collections. I'm kind of in love with the sort of tomato colored umbrella. It just has this vintage kind of, um, I don't know, essence to it that I've uh, feels like both um, kind of something very New England to me and something kind of very West Coast to me at the same time. I love the color of it. This is the moon window. It's a classic Chinese kind of garden element, the sort of round opening in a, in a, in a stone or masonry wall. And it's just this wonderful sort of um, kind of a romantic and kind of clean and class. I love geometric shapes um, and finding the simplicity of geometric shapes in furniture design and even in this garden with the oval or this round shape or you know, whatever it may be. Um, I became obsessed with these blue and white dishes which are a creole pattern called Japon, J-A-P-O-N. And um, they're the same dishes that were in the dining room at Giverny. And so they're kind of tough to find, I kind of collect them a piece at a time, but I just love, I put them on top of a Tiffany cobalt blue and gilded dish from the 20s and this beautiful um, Suzani fabric. And just like, it's everything of the colors of the garden and kind of this continental European beauty. There were all of these beautiful oak trees in front of the academy that one by one storms and age and stuff that um, we've lost. And this one, Dan especially didn't want to cut the last one down. And now it's even more covered with this incredible rose that I found that's climbing um, 
all over it, and another kind of limey, small leaf oak tree that literally is growing and hugging the thing. Um, and that's just inside the gate to the um, to the academy house driveway. There are dark pools and there are light pools, and I like lighter pools because they're happy. And I believe too in doing garden pools that look like a pond. Um, but a pale gray pool is beautiful because it then looks like the color of the sky and they're happy and light. And I honestly, I like pools that you can be in the whole thing, not just a deep end and a small shallow end. So this pool goes to about six feet or so. And there are these long steps across the one end and just that simple bluestone coping and these concrete pavers. It's just so clean and beautiful and simple. And this is a view across to the pool and sort of, I guess this is um, maybe late afternoon light and um, it's got its own kind of um, woodland, you know, fern and um, other things that happen on the seasons underneath it. And um, it's a pathway to all and kind of, um, uh, you know, a center to everything. The garden, I mean, I would say my grandmother would be so proud of the garden. I mean, they worked so hard on their, they had a lovely garden and I kind of do it in a way for her. And she taught me so much about looking at what was beautiful and why and all of that. But the garden's also about what survives and there's a lot of kind of orphan trees and, um, you know, I kind of pushed the limits with certain, certain combinations and things, but I love like the spirit of it. I walk through Central Park and touch the oldest trees in Central Park, like you survivor, you, you know, and, and um, I believe in the energy of it. I think it's really important what struggles and makes it through and what thrives and even what doesn't, I kind of fight for it too. And um, I love that in seeing it happen.